الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم انا نحمدك ونشكرك ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول سبحانه وتعالى ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمش في الارض مرها ان الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور my dear brothers and sisters uh, first of all i praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his wonderful blessings and gifts for the gift of faith and health family and protection from the deadly diseases and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us always to turn to him in repentance seeking his refuge a refuge and protection with him from all that is evil and harmful for us may allah protect us our families our communities from all deadly diseases and inspire us always to turn to him in remembrance and in repentance today i want to talk about hubris or pride they say before pride comes before the fall islam the quran and the traditions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam keep on reminding us that we need to practice opening our spiritual eye the eyes within our hearts in order to decipher the signs of god in his creation in history as events unfold so one of the greatest thing that we learn from the events from the newspapers the story is the story of far pride before the fall so i would like to use this story it is a story repeated throughout history the quran is full of such stories how allah subhanahu wa taala brought down the tyrants who were when glorious or arrogant and proud and thought they are even bigger than allah subhanahu wa greater than allah subhanahu wa taala that they are the truth and their word is the truth so they trembled under their feet all norms of truth and justice all ethical values they had no empathy no sympathy no mercy for anyone else because they thought only of themselves and catering to their ego and thinking of themselves fulfilling satisfying their ego the need to be known to be recognized to be served to be worshiped this is the biggest of sin in islam as well as it in the quran and in the bible it is the root of all sins we have the story of iblis the reason for his downfall was he acted proudly he rebelled against god he questioned god why should i prostrate bring myself down bow down to adam he failed to recognize he is doing so by the order of allah it is the order of allah subhanahu wa taala but he questioned he rebelled he thought he know better than god almighty so the root this is the root of all sins is the first sin ever committed so islam teaches us the we need to struggle to rip uh, rid our heart of for of pride but when we say pride or hubris we need to distinguish it from self confidence islam teaches us that we should be confident we should try to excel and we should islam teaches us that we should love beauty when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said iyyakum wal kibr beware of pride hubris someone asked 
what if somebody, every one of us loves to wear beautiful dress, beautiful attire, and of course, good shoes. The Prophet wasallam said, no, that is not pride. Allah is Jameel, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Pride is batarul haqq wa ghamtun nas. It is failure to recognize the truth and looking others with disdain, contempt, looking down on others because he thinks that he is better, he is superior. And this is a sickness, a spiritual toxin as Imam Ghazali rahmahullah in his wonderful encyclopedic work, revival of religious tradition, religious sciences. He has a whole chapter you know, elaborating, discussing in detail the evils of pride. And of course, you know, Imam Ghazali teaches us that we need to work hard to develop the opposite virtue, the quality of humility. And for that, we need to engage in introspection, self-examination. Islam teaches us we have no right to be proud overly proud because as human beings, we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. He always reminded himself saying, I am a slave of Allah. I sit like a slave. I walk like a slave. I eat like a slave. And of course, in that beautiful story of Fatu Makkah, when he was surrounded by people defeated, enemy, people who, who drove him out of Makkah and now they're defeated and they are around him. And one of them was trembling because he re remembered that here is a conqueror now. And he knows the stories of the conquerors. So he thought Rasulullah is like a world, a conqueror. The Prophet told him, how we narek, take it easy, man. I am not a king. I am not a conqueror. I am the son of a poor woman of Quraysh who could not afford fresh meat. So we had to eat dried meat. So he reminded himself always that he is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he resisted. When people said, Anta Sayyiduna, you are our master and the son of our master. He told them, stop, don't elevate me over the rank that Allah has placed me. I am a slave and the messenger of Allah, slave of Allah and his messenger. And let not shaitan tempt you away to reverence me and exalt my, my rank and to put me on a pedestal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam teaches us to humble ourselves in the way and we, we must keep reminding ourselves. And this is one of the lesson we must learn from the Salah, Sujood. We are ordered to prostrate so many times a day. And it should remind us that we are from the earth, created from the earth, and we must go back to the earth. And our spiritual masters like Hasan al-Basri taught us some simple tips. When you see someone who is older than you and you have the temptation to consider yourself better than him, remind yourself, this man lived a longer life than you. So he had a lot of opportunities to do a lot of good, good deeds unlike you. And when you see a younger person and you are tempted to look around on him, tell yourself that this man lived a shorter life. You have, many years than him. And so he had less chance to do sins. And he said, when you see a dog and you are tempted to look down on a dog, on that dog, remind yourself that dog could be better than you because he's acting on his instinct. I, as a human being, have a moral conscience and capacity for reasoning and choosing willfully and know the right from the wrong. So 
in this way, we need to train ourselves. We have some beautiful stories from some of our rulers of the past, even though they were the rulers in their time unparalleled in the way they ruled. You know, we have the example of Harun al-Rashid, the greatest of the Abbasid caliphs, whose kingdom extended from east to west, from north to south. And of course, he was a man of accomplishments. One day he was going on his horseback, riding his horse, and he was stopped by a Jewish man who said, Amir al Mu'minin, O commander of the faithful, Ittaqillah, fear Allah. As soon as he heard that, Harun Rashid dismounted and prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stood up and asked the man, What do you need? And of course, he submitted his request to the caliph, and the caliph immediately ordered that his request should be fulfilled, his need should be fulfilled. Then when somebody reminded him, he is a Jewish man, Harun Rashid said to him, do you want me to belong to that category that Allah has condemned in, his, in the book, holy book? When he is told, fear Allah, his false pride tempts him to sin, to act sinfully, to react sinfully. Hasbuhu jahannam, hell is his abode. Suffice, hell is sufficient for him, and what a worst abode is awaiting for him. So this is how he reminded himself, when the man reminded him, to be very fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this caliph humbled himself. And the same, you have so many examples of Umar al-Khattab and others. And you have the example of Umar al-Khattab. One day when he heard that his governor, Egyptian governor, his son in a horse race with the Coptic Christian, one Christian, the Christian's horse, the cop Christ Christian's horse bet his horse in race and defeated his horse. The man, the prince or the governor's son beat him up. And the Coptic Christian wrote to Umar al-Khattab complaining. And of course, Umar called them and verified and then ordered the Coptic Christian, gave him the stick and told him to administer take justice exactly as inflicted on him. And then Caliph Omar shouted, exclaimed, How dare you enslave people, treat people, human beings like slaves? When people are born free, everyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim is free. You have no right to treat them as slaves. And of course, Islam said the beautiful example, the messenger of mercy said, if there are people working for you and it is time to eat, let's make them sit with you and share the meal with you. And one day the prophet heard the eminent companion, Abu Dhar al-Ghafari radiallahu anhu, he was still he had traces of paganism in him. He got so angry with Bilal and called him Ibn Sauda, son of a black woman. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his cheek became red. And he told Bilal, Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, inna kamru'um fika jahiliya. You are a man still carrying the traces of paganism. You need to cleanse yourself. And then of course he took it as a lesson. And we are told, Abu Dhar told, he put, placed his head on the, and ordered Bilal to put his feet on his head. And of course, we are also told, later on, Abu Dhar will be walking with his servant and giving him the exact, he is dressed up with the same kind of dress, same shoes, same everything. So people would take, would take them as prince. 
When somebody asked him, are you prince? He said, no, this is my servant. He's the man working for me. But the prophet taught me, you know, they are your brothers. Treat them like your brothers. Give them the same cloth that you wear, the same shoes that you wear. This is how Rasulullah taught us to humble ourselves, to recognize the truth. When somebody reveals the truth, advises us, accept the best of advice and follow what is true. Batarul Haqqi wa the mighty, the proud, the arrogant might fall. It is just a matter of time. The history teaches us that is the lesson of the Quran, lesson in the Bible, and that is what is unfolding in front of our eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, teach us, inspire us to act humbly. And whenever we have the temptation of being proud, acting proudly, could be because of knowledge that you think you have, or it could be because of the wealth you have, it could be because of your beauty or handsomeness, or because of your mansion, or because of the car you drive, whatever. It's a universal symptom, a disease that we need to approach it and treat it, struggle against it and kill it and develop humility in the manner of the beloved messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was one of the humblest man. And of course, Isa Alaihi Salam, look at these mighty prophets. They used to sit with the poor and walk with the poor, eat with the poor. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed, Allahumma ahyini miskina wa tawaffani miskina wa hshurni fi zumrat al masakin. Ya Allah, let me live as poor and die as poor and gather me in the company of the poor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to act humbly and rid from our hearts the disease of false pride and hubris. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum.